What if the only friend you ever need is the one looking back at you in the mirror? Welcome to the Core of Self-Improvement, a sanctuary where we delve into the realms of personal development, stoicism, and spirituality. Today, we are embarking on a journey of self-discovery. Stay with us till the end of this, this video, and you'll discover tools and insights that can transform your relationship with yourself. It's a journey worth taking. Trust us. We are also going to introspect, exploring the most crucial relationship you'll ever have. The one with yourself. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to neglect this relationship, to sweep it under the rug in favor of more important things. But let's pause for a moment. When was the last time you had a conversation with yourself, or spent quality time alone taking a walk, observing your own reactions in different situations, noticing how you behave when alone versus when with others? Understanding these dynamics can heighten self-awareness and significantly strengthen your relationship with yourself. Not just a fleeting thought or a passing daydream, but a genuine, heartfelt conversation. If the answer is, it's been a while or worse, I've never done that, then it's high time we change that. Consider this. We spend every waking and sleeping moment with ourselves. We are the first to know when we're happy, the first to feel our pain, and the only ones who truly understand our hopes, dreams, and fears. Despite this, this, we often treat ourselves with less kindness, less respect, and less understanding than we would offer to a stranger. Why is that? We are often our own harshest critics, berating ourselves for our failures, obsessing over our flaws, and neglecting our achievements. We demand perfection from ourselves, and when we inevitably fall short, we punish. If we treated our friends the way we treat ourselves, we'd probably be rather lonely. But it doesn't have to be this way. We can change the narrative. We can learn to treat ourselves with the same compassion, respect and understanding that we extend to others. We can become our own best friend. So how can we achieve this? How can we transform the relationship we have with ourselves from one of criticism and negativity to one of love, understanding and support? How can we become our own best friend? Well, that's exactly what we're going to explore in this video. So sit back, relax and prepare to embark on a journey of self-discovery and growth. So, how can we become our own best friend? Let's explore. Before we delve into the power of self-talk and its impact, let's take a moment to stand in front of the mirror of self-reflection. This isn't just any mirror. It's a mirror that reflects our inner selves, our thoughts, feelings, and emotions. It's a mirror that reveals the relationship we have with ourselves. When we look into this mirror, what do we see? Do we see a friend or a critic? Do we see someone who supports and encourages us? or someone who tears us down? Do we see our achievements and strengths, or do we only see our flaws and failures? This mirror doesn't lie, it shows us the truth, however uncomfortable it may be. But it's only by facing this truth that we can begin to change our narrative and cultivate a more positive relationship with ourselves. So take a deep breath, muster your courage, and take a good, hard look into the mirror of self-reflection. What do you see? Remember, this isn't an exercise in self-criticism. It's an exercise in self-awareness. It's about recognizing where we are now so we can chart a course to where we want to be. It's about understanding our current relationship with ourselves so we can transform it into a relationship of love, respect, and support. So what do you see in the mirror of self-reflection? Let's explore together in the next section as we delve into the power of self-talk and its impact on our lives. How we talk to ourselves matters more than we think. This dialogue, known as self-talk, is the internal conversation we have with ourselves that influences how we perceive the world around us and our place within it. Consider the language you use when you're alone with your thoughts. Is it harsh and critical or gentle and encouraging? The words you use in these intimate moments with yourself have the power to shape your reality. They can build you up or tear you down, and they can dramatically influence your self-esteem and confidence. Imagine you've just made a mistake. Do you berate yourself with words like stupid or worthless? This is an example of negative self-talk. It's destructive and it erodes your self-esteem over time. But what if instead you responded to your mistake with kindness and understanding? What if you told yourself, it's okay, everyone makes mistakes. I'll learn from this and do better next time. This is positive self-talk and it has the power to boost your confidence and resilience. Another example, you're facing a daunting task. Does your inner voice tell you, I can't do this, it's too hard? Or does it say, this is a challenge, but I'm capable and I'll give it my best shot? 
The former is a self-defeating prophecy that can stop you in your tracks. The latter however is empowering and can propel you forward, turning obstacles into opportunities. The key is to become more aware of your inner dialogue and to consciously shift from negative to positive self-talk. It's not about denying reality or ignoring problems. It's about choosing a more constructive and compassionate narrative that supports your growth and well-being. Self-talk is a powerful tool in our self-improvement arsenal. It's the soundtrack of our lives, and we have the power to write the lyrics. So why not choose words that lift us up, that inspire us, that make us feel good about ourselves and our capabilities? Remember, the words you tell yourself are powerful, so choose them wisely. Are you your own worst critic or your own best cheerleader? Let's talk about self-compassion. It's a concept that we often overlook, yet it's crucial to our mental health and overall well-being. So what is self-compassion? It's essentially being kind to yourself as you would be to a dear friend or loved one. It's about understanding that we all make mistakes, and that's okay. It's about accepting ourselves, flaws and all, and recognizing that these flaws make us human. Being kind to ourselves isn't always easy. We're often taught to be tough, to push through, to ignore our feelings and just get on with it. But imagine if a friend came to you feeling down and defeated, would you tell them to just get over it? Or would you offer words of comfort, understanding and support? Most of us would opt for the latter. So why do we treat ourselves any differently? Why do we berate ourselves for the very same things we would console a friend for? It's time we change that narrative. When we're kind to ourselves, especially during difficult times, we're not only improving our mental health but also our resilience. We're teaching ourselves that it's okay to not be okay sometimes. We're allowing ourselves the space to feel, to heal, and to grow. Self-compassion also allows us to take responsibility for our actions without falling into a pit of self-loathing. It's about acknowledging our shortcomings but also recognizing our strength and capacity to change. It's about celebrating our achievements, no matter how small they may seem. Being kind to ourselves isn't about ignoring our faults or shying away from challenges, it's about embracing our humanity with all its ups and downs, it's about recognizing that we are enough just as we are, and remember, how we treat ourselves often reflects how we treat others. When we are kind to ourselves, we're more likely to extend that kindness to those around us. We're more likely to show empathy, understanding, and love. In the end, the kindness you show yourself is the kindness you also offer to the world. When the going gets tough, are you there for yourself? This question may seem simple yet it carries profound implications. In the midst of life's storms, it's easy to be swept away by negative emotions. But remember, just as a lighthouse stays firm despite the raging waves, you too can cultivate an inner support system that stands strong amidst life's trials. The first step in building this support system is acknowledging that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to feel overwhelmed, to feel defeated. These are human emotions and experiencing them doesn't make you weak. In fact, it's in these moments that you have the opportunity to show yourself true strength, the strength of resilience. Resilience isn't about avoiding difficulties but rather, it's about facing them head-on with courage and determination. It's about saying, yes, this is tough, but I'm tougher. And you know what? You are tougher. You have weathered storms before and you will weather this one too. But resilience doesn't mean going it alone. Reach out to trusted friends or family, seek professional help if needed. Remember, asking for help is not a sign of weakness but a sign of strength. It shows you value yourself enough to seek support when you need it. Next, practice self-compassion. Speak to yourself as you would to a dear friend. Be patient with yourself, understanding that growth takes time. Celebrate your small victories no matter how insignificant they may seem. They are proof of your progress, your ability to endure and overcome. Finally, focus on what you can control. You may not be able to change the situation but you can change how you respond to it. Instead of dwelling on the problem, focus on potential solutions. Adopt a problem-solving mindset, turning obstacles into opportunities for growth. Remember, you are your own best cheerleader, your own best friend. Your words, thoughts, and actions towards yourself can either uplift you or bring you down. Choose to uplift. Choose resilience. Choose self-support. Being there for yourself during tough times is a testament to your strength and resilience. Every storm you weather, every challenge you overcome, is a step closer to becoming the best version of yourself. You are stronger than you think. You got this. Do you love yourself unconditionally or does it depend on circumstances? This question is not meant to provoke guilt or shame, but to stimulate introspection. Because when it comes to personal growth and self-improvement, 
embracing ourselves, flaws and all, is a cornerstone. Let's imagine self-love as a garden. It's a place we cultivate, nurture and tend to. It's a place where we allow things to grow, not just the beautiful blooming flowers of our achievements, but also the weeds of our mistakes and shortcomings. Because these too are part of our garden, part of who we are. Yet many of us have learned to love ourselves conditionally. We're kind to ourselves when we succeed, achieve our goals, or behave in ways that align with our values. However, when we fail, make mistakes, or act out of alignment with our values, we often become our own worst critics. We pull out the metaphorical weed killer and douse our garden in harsh, judgmental words, effectively stifling our growth. But imagine if we approached our garden differently. What if we saw each weed as an opportunity for growth, a chance to learn, to understand ourselves better, to become more resilient? This is the essence of embracing ourselves, recognizing that we are not perfect, that we have flaws and make mistakes, and accepting these aspects of ourselves not as failures, but as integral parts of our journey. It's about shifting our perception from seeing ourselves as a problem to be fixed, to a work in progress. So how do we practice embracing ourselves? It begins with mindfulness, paying attention to how we talk to ourselves, especially during challenging times. It involves replacing harsh, judgmental self-talk with compassionate, understanding dialogue. It means acknowledging our flaws and mistakes, learning from them, and then letting them go. Embracing ourselves also means celebrating our strengths and accomplishments, no matter how small. It's about recognizing our worth and value, independent of external validation. By nurturing our garden with love, compassion and acceptance, we create a fertile ground for growth, resilience and self-improvement. We become our own best friend, our biggest supporter, our most compassionate teacher. Remember, to love yourself is to grow and to grow is to love yourself. Can you imagine treating a friend the way you treat yourself? Take a moment to let that question truly sink in. Now imagine a scenario where something doesn't go as planned. You're upset, frustrated, and maybe even a little bit angry. If a friend were in this situation, how would you respond? Would you berate them, criticize them, or make them feel worse? Or would you offer words of comfort, encouragement, and support? The answer is likely the latter. So why is it that we often treat ourselves worse than we would treat a friend in the same situation? This is a question that's worth pondering. Perhaps it's easier to extend kindness and understanding to others than it is to ourselves. Or maybe we've internalized a harsh critical voice that we mistakenly believe will push us to do better. But here's a truth that's worth embracing. The way we talk to ourselves matters. In fact, it's one of the most critical aspects of self-improvement and personal development. And if we're constantly belittling, criticizing, and judging ourselves, we're not setting ourselves up for success. We're setting ourselves up for self-doubt, low self-esteem, and a lack of confidence. So how can we start to change this narrative? It begins with awareness. Pay attention to the way you talk to yourself. Notice the words you use, the tone of your voice, and the feelings that arise. Are you being kind, or are you being harsh? Once you're aware of your self-talk, you can start to change it. Replace negative words with positive ones. Instead of saying, I can't do this, try saying, I'm learning and growing. Instead of berating yourself for a mistake, remind yourself that everyone makes mistakes and that they're opportunities for learning and growth. Remember, being your own best friend isn't just about being kind to yourself when things are going well. It's about being kind to yourself all the time, especially when things are tough. The way you treat yourself sets the standard for others and for how you want to be treated. So let's set a high standard. Let's treat ourselves with the kindness, respect and love that we all deserve. It's never too late to change the story you tell yourself. Let's delve into some practical ways to reframe your relationship with yourself. The first step to improving self-talk is awareness. Tune into your inner dialogue. What are the messages you're constantly telling yourself? Are they positive or negative? Understanding your self-talk is the first step to changing it. Next, challenge your negative self-talk. If you catch yourself saying something negative, pause and ask yourself, would I say this to a dear friend? If the answer is no, then why say it to yourself? Now let's discuss self-compassion. Imagine that your best friend is going through a tough time. How would you treat them? You'd probably be understanding, patient, and supportive, right? Now apply the same level of kindness and tolerance to yourself. It's essential to remember that everyone makes mistakes. It's a part of the human experience and an opportunity for growth. Moving on to self-support, it's crucial to be your own cheerleader, especially during difficult times. When you face a challenge, remind yourself of your strengths and achievements. 
Give yourself the credit you deserve and reassure yourself that you can handle the situation. Self-improvement is a journey, not a destination. It doesn't happen overnight. It requires practice, patience, and perseverance. But remember, every step you take towards being kinder to yourself is a step towards becoming your own best friend. Finally, remember to celebrate your progress. Every time you successfully replace a negative thought with a positive one, every time you show yourself compassion, every time you support yourself during a difficult situation, celebrate it. This will reinforce positive behavior and make it easier to continue your journey towards self-improvement. The journey to becoming your own best friend starts with a single step. So, take that step today. Start by being more aware of your self-talk, challenge your negative thoughts, be compassionate towards yourself, support yourself during tough times, and celebrate your progress. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. You have the most important person on your side, you. Being your own best friend is the ultimate form of self-improvement. As we draw our journey to a close, it's essential to reflect on the powerful insights we've discovered along the way. The relationship you have with yourself, the dialogue you engage in with your innermost thoughts, and the manner in which you treat yourself, all play a pivotal role in shaping your reality. We've delved into the concept of self-talk and its profound impact on our mindset. We've learned that the words we use to speak to ourselves, particularly during challenging times, can either uplift us or pull us down. So let's choose words that are kind, nourishing and encouraging, mirroring the way we would speak to a dear friend. We've also explored the importance of being kind to ourselves, not just in times of joy and success, but especially when things don't go our way. Kindness starts from within. And when we learn to treat ourselves with compassion and understanding, we can better extend these virtues to others. Moreover, we've highlighted the significance of self-support during trying times. Remember, it's okay to feel uncomfortable or face difficult situations. What's important is how we support ourselves through these periods, just as a true friend would. We've talked about embracing ourselves, the good and the not so good. It's about accepting who we are in all our complexity and uniqueness. And in doing so, we create a space for growth and transformation. We've also discussed the power of changing the narrative, of reframing our relationship with ourselves. It's about shifting from a place of self-criticism to self-love, from self-doubt to self-belief. In essence, the journey of self-improvement is about becoming our own best friend. It's about cultivating a relationship with ourselves that's rooted in kindness, support, and love. Remember, the relationship you have with yourself is the foundation for all other relationships in your life. But being your own best friend does not mean you have to push others away. It does not mean you have to neglect the friends you already have. It just means embracing who you are and being more kind to yourself, loving, accepting and respecting who you are with or without friends. Be kind, be supportive, and most importantly, be your own best friend. You've taken the first step towards becoming your own best friend today. You've opened your mind to the possibility of a kinder, more supportive relationship with yourself, and that's something to celebrate. But remember, self-improvement is not a destination, it's a journey. And like any journey, it requires dedication, consistency, and the right guidance. That's where we come in. Here on this channel, the core of self-improvement. We're committed to providing you with the tools and knowledge you need to continue growing and evolving. We delve deep into topics like personal development, stoicism, and spirituality, bringing you insightful content that can help transform your life. But we can't do it alone. We need your support. We need your engagement, we want to hear your stories, your struggles, and your victories. So if you found value in this video, if it made you think, or if it inspired you to change the way you relate to yourself, let us know. Give us a thumbs up to show your support. Comment down below and share your thoughts. Have you been too hard on yourself? How do you plan to change that? Your experiences and insights can help others who are on the same journey. And of course, subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just getting access to our extensive library of content, but you're also becoming part of a community. A community of people who, like you, are committed to becoming the best version of themselves. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update from us. We're always working on new content, exploring different facets of self-improvement, and we wouldn't want you to miss out. So, let's continue this journey together. Let's learn, grow, and evolve. Let's become our own best friends. On this journey of self-improvement, remember, you're not alone. We're here to support you every step of the way.